Hello, hello, we are here at the final stage of our concept development. We need to um, plug in some values and start rendering the character. In the last videos, we made the line art and some lines for texturing as well. We're going to use that as a layer on top of um, our values. So let's jump right into it. Yes, we got a line work and uh, make sure that you have that on top of another layer so you can work underneath that. And you can see what I'm starting by doing is um, I'm using the magic wand select tool to select the jacket because we already laid, made the line art. I can on the line art select, select it and then make a new layer where I can fill in the, the values. So I try to keep everything on layers. This meaning is that I want his jacket and his pants, that's probably going to be the same material. I want this to be on a layer for itself. And the same goes for his shirt. I want his shirt to be on a layer by itself. And the reason why, um, I will tell you later on. But for now, I hope you will just bear with me and do the same thing on your concept. And you can see that uh, not every time you will be able to select it. Sometimes you will have to uh, paint in the values by hand and you can see that's simply what I'm doing right now for the belt. <coughs> and I try to think about how should the values of these be. I mean it's probably going to be dark because it's going to be leather. And on the jacket it's probably going to be kind of dark as well because it's a dark jacket. I mean, most pirates has that kind of dark jacket. The shirt, however, is going to be light. So I'm going to fill that in with something uh, brighter, a brighter value. And you can see I'm not at all thinking about how should the light be and how should the shadow fall and stuff like that. For now, I'm only thinking about what the material is. I find this the easiest way because it's an easy step you can take. It's just another step in the row. So why not do it this way? And when you have these values, you always, or not always, but you have something you can work from. I mean, you're not starting on a blank, blank canvas, which can be very tricky. <coughs> And I'm thinking this might be uh, it's a scarf, so it might be red or something like that. And that's a dark value as well. So I'm trying to get the dark value in there. And same goes for the hat. I want it to be kind of dark. Right now I'm uh, plugging out the skull so I can give that kind of a color as well or another color uh, value. Oops, and I tried to select it but I couldn't really. <coughs> so by now you can still fix things, it no, it's not like everything is settled. I mean you should actually try to see if there's anything you could fix. You can keep the same materials, for example if you have a wooden leg and some wooden uh, shoulder pads like I do, you can keep them on the same layer and add them. So now I'm plugging in his beard. I want his beard to be dark as well. And I think he should be uh, pale in the skin because that's going to make a good contrast. And I want uh, I want in this uh, concept I want his head to be the focal point. When you are rendering or making an image, you should consider what is your focal point. And how can you make people look there? Most of the time it will automatically be on the eyes. But you can also help people look in the right spots on the image if you uh, make the biggest value between light and dark. So for example I'm making a very dark beard and dark brows. This means that people will probably look there if the skin is very pale as well. 
So it's a nice little trick you can use. <coughs> and the wooden egg is being done. You can see there was a small thing which meant the line wasn't uh, closed. And when the line is not closed, you can use the magic one tool. I also, when I select it, I go on the new layer and I use uh, selection expand. This means that you won't get a white line between the tone, the tone, the tone, sorry, the tone you're filling in, and the line. So that's what I'm doing every time. You probably can't see it because it goes so fast, but. I'm just selecting inside and then I'm expanding the selection and filling it out with tone on a new layer. It's very quick to do and it just takes a few clicks to do it. So it's probably like a lighting in this video. And then I'm trying with some values for the metal parts. And you can also keep the layers uh, on top of each other and on the uh, lower layers because then you can just draw, you don't have to consider being in line and stuff like that. And this uh, this always reminds me of the time when I was little. We had these uh, painting books where you could paint on a lot of drawings which were already the line art and then you had to paint yourself inside of the lines. It was pretty fun. But I always messed it up. <laughs> So I blocked in a value for the eyes as well. And I want them of course to be white. You can always, if you were going to add colors, you could do that. Uh, I know that some people like adding colors on top of their grayscale pictures. Personally, I don't like that. I like to, if I want to do something with color, I will start out with colors. Mostly because it's just way easier for me and looks much better in the end. I don't like, um, typically you can see that a picture went from grayscale to color and it just looks weird, it doesn't look natural because there's so much to coloring, there's so much about complementary color, local color and what color is the light and what color is the shadows and all that stuff so it's not that easy, I mean it's not that easy just to put on the colors and make it a multiplayer layer or something like that. So when I gray make a grayscale picture, it's probably because I want to keep it grayscale. I don't know if you remember, but I talked about a secret in the beginning of the videos. And I hope you're really excited to find out. But in general, it's it's a secret, but it's not that much of a secret. I mean, you probably already learned it without knowing it through this video or in another video. I'm making his face now, and I think it should be uh, white as well, or pale, but not as pale as his eyes. I added in a gradient in the background just to give it a bit more vari variation. And then in the end here I'm going to uh, do the sword. So I really think it was a good choice to make a sword instead of a gun. Um yeah. So of course the metal will be uh, very light as well, and uh, the shaft <laughs> will be dark. Alright, so I'm going to start with uh, rendering it out. I'm going to select all the layers 
first and then place it in another place. I felt like this was a better place to place it. Still, I'm not thinking that much about the composition of the whole picture because this is only a character design. Um, so I'll think about that later on. Now I'm adding in a cone which uh, shows the light source. So I want the light to go in this direction down on the character. Um, and I'm just starting with blocking in the colors. I'm using the layers I made earlier for the shirt. I'm using a layer on top of that, but I'm using it as a clipping board. This means that I can't draw um, anywhere else than on the layer underneath it. It's a really nice way to, uh, to make these values. And that's why I made the layers in the beginning. Um, so for now I'm just plugging in the value still. I'm plugging in the shadow value now though. So we are a step further. Um, this is a nice way to do it, I think, because again, it's just another step. You can keep taking steps. And in my opinion, that's really the easiest way to get this done. It can be kind of uh, too complicated if you have to do everything in the same or when they first see it. So now I'm just using uh, the opacity to, um, to even it out a bit more. I generally I don't like to use opacity on pressure sensitivity because when you do that the image tends to be very muddy the result you get and it's not the same way that you normally would paint so what I do is I just press 5 on the keyboard when I have a color and this color will automatically be opacity 50% so it means that this will have a lower opacity on it and it's really an easy way to do it and then I can just select the color that I did with opacity 50 and then still keep it on 50 and it will be even less opacity. And this can smooth out very fast and very easily. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I know that it looks a bit um, still in stages with the shadows, but you can see that I actually think I blurred it out a little bit. And now I'm going to add in a bit on the more darker parts. So I'm not thinking about what is in front of in the picture and what is behind the picture. I'm just adding in where the shadows should be, kind of. I'm not adding in a lot about um, what is uh, in the foreground, what is in the background, and all the stuff. Now I'm, I'm adding a cast shadow right here and normally when I use cast shadow I use it to define the shapes on the objects a bit more so you can see this is wrapping over the jacket and I'm also using a bit of a bounce light on the jacket sleeve itself I'm also trying to see how dark it can go on the head but you can see this is only the last part of the video, I mean this is only like 10% of what we did. And still, it's what people think is the most important thing. I see so, so many YouTube videos only showing this. And in my opinion it's not, it's not that important, I mean the other steps are more important. I mean, of course it, look good. it looks good when you show it to people. Hey look I made this awesome drawing and it took me 2 hours or something like that. But you're missing all the choices. Is there any choices you made? What did you do to enhance the, the picture? Not saying that you do it, but <laughs> I was talking in a general sense. I know that a lot of YouTube videos show this. I'm just using a smoother brush now to smooth it out because the shadows on the sleeves and stuff like that shouldn't be too sharp. Somewhere you want really sharp shadows. I mean, cast shadows start with a sharp shadow. And also, if you have folds, they will have a sharp shadow inside of them. So, rendering is something you need to learn. And I mean, I still have a lot to learn on this subject, still. Uh, so, 
Rendering is a nice skill to have, and you can probably do some really cool stuff. I mean, you can show how nice you are at rendering, and a lot of people do, and they get a lot of nice response. And I think rendering is also cool, but in my opinion, it has nothing to do with character design. Character design is designing, it's not rendering or something different. So right now I'm just trying to add in some highlights. Smooth out a bit maybe. I think now that I look on it, the white dot on his shirt, the button, it's very um, focal point like you look there when you look at it now so I should probably try to do something about that but I'm not sure if I do I hope I do but again this is one of those things that you don't really look at when you are in the moment you can see it afterwards <laughs> but it's too late damn it I mean, this is maybe not the way you want to do it. Maybe you want to do the print sensi sensitivity thing with opacity, and maybe you like to start out just with a lot of values and then refine afterwards. But I mean, this is the way that I like to do it. I think it's an easy way, and it has a nice result as well. It's a step by step, but it's very easy to follow those steps. So I'm adding some highlights on the metal parts as well. I'm trying to indicate that some reflection is going on here. <coughs> and um, you can see that it looks very flat if you don't start adding some values to it. And I'm now going to add some values to the beard. I'm trying to think of which planes are where. Where does it go out? Where would the light be caught? Because this this hair or this uh, beard has a very funny shape. So I'm trying to kind of show that within the rendering. Also that will help in the 3D stages when we're later going to do it. Um, so already now I feel like I can see the shape. So I'm just working very uh, large right now, I'm not zooming in or anything. <coughs> I also think when I do something and it looks kind of too bright, I try to tone it down a bit with the opacity on the layer. And you can do that if you have a lot of layers. But still you should try as well to name your layers because it can get really complicated. So I try to keep a layer called shirt and a layer called head and stuff like that and face probably or skin or something like that so it's important to think about those stuff I also use uh, the gradient tool sometimes and that's a trick I learned from a friend where you just for example you can have the jacket and then you can use on top you can use a gradient that goes to a lighter color or a darker color and this helps a lot because it's so quick to do and then later on you can refine if you want some places to be more uh, sharp. And you can see here on the hands and the face I try not to use too, um, too smooth of a brush because the face has really a lot of sharp shadows in it. But it also has of course some soft shadows. Around the nose and eyes it tends to be hard, but around the cheeks and neck it will be more uh, subtle. So I think I can feel by now that the other hand is still annoys me in some way, I think. It looks in some way too cartoony for the other hand and for the character itself. It looks a lot simple. 
So I probably thought that I could fix it by windowing, but this is a big mistake. You shouldn't try to fix anything in windowing. You should just enhance the good things you got going already. <coughs> But it's nice that you can see what I did wrong and maybe you won't do it, but maybe you will, and if you will, then you know what to do. now and generally the eyes tend to have a little shadow from the eyelashes underneath them and they also tend to have a round shape so they will have kind of a soft shadow coming from beneath and then on the top they will have a hard shadow and of course they will have some kind of highlight in them and they will also look wet in some way so they can be very tricky to do but I think I pulled it off quite well in this picture see that uh, I just keep working and it gets smaller and smaller the things that I'm working on um, I generally say to myself that I will use one hour on windowing and then nothing more and that's simply because you can keep windowing you can keep doing stuff to it and I feel like if you use one hour you still use enough time so you can learn stuff and you can make some mistakes that you can learn from but I would much rather make a hundred drawings where I spend one hour on them, then one drawing that I spend a hundred hours on it. Probably the one hundred hour drawing would be very nice, but I don't think I would learn mu as much. <coughs> I think I spent one hour and twenty minutes or something on this, without counting the blogging. And well, I think the blogging took about. 10 to 20 minutes so it's not that big of a deal um, so I think I'm just uh, thinking that I need to fix this hand I can't go on without it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and sketch out a new hand and then I'm going to make the line art and then I'm going to start on the toning again. So thankfully it was only the hand that I thought was not working. Um, and I think this sketch is already being a lot better than the previous hand. Because it looks more realistic and fits in with the character. It also has some gesture to it. You can kind of read stuff out from only the hand. And the point was here that he should be kind of saying hi but not in a convinced way it should be uh, how can I say it he's saying hi but in an unsecure way it's kind of half-hearted and I like that I think it fits in with the story uh, the, the other one wasn't if it if all the fingers were straight, it wouldn't be the same, so I, I'm really happy with the new hand I did. And I could see that the thumb was way too big, so I'm gonna squeeze scale that. And then I just look at the result. And then I try in to add in the values again, and you can see the old values from the old hand is still there. So I'm just going to erase that.
But I mean, I could try fix the old hand again and again, but it, it just wouldn't be good. I would really have to redo it. There, there was no way all around it. <coughs> so I'm just painting in the blocking values again. And I mean, this only took me like 10 minutes or, I don't know, 5 minutes maybe. So it's just a nice way to, it only takes that sort of amount and people would definitely see that there was something wrong with the hand. So I'm just adding in the shadows that comes from the light and I think I'm going to add some cast shadows as well just to uh, indicate where the light comes from and how the shape of the hand is. But I mean it's also something to consider, do you really want to spend the time on changing a lot of stuff because some sometimes you want to do it but other times you don't really have the time so you just have to go with it you just have to accept that you don't got the time to do it and then i'm adding in some cast shadows from the fingers i'm smoothing it out a bit i'm trying to get some bounce light as well on the hand um, if you don't know it, bounce light is when the light hits the ground, for example, it will bounce back up on uh, your pants or something like that. In general, there's a lot of bouncing light in the world, so you just need to go look for it. And you can see it. <coughs> so I added some as well on the other hand. And then I want to add a cast shadow on the ground to give him some kind of feeling that he's actually touching the ground. In general these shadows tend to be very sharp, um, where the ground is uh, in contact with the character. And then as it smooths out, it will be more smooth of course. But in the beginning it will be very sharp. So all of the stuff I'm doing now is just to make it more nice to look at. I didn't really like the highlight he had there on the sleeve. So I'm adding some cast shadow from the shoulder patch. bit of uh, the folds in the clothes. The thing now is I'm just fixing, fixing the small things that I didn't like. I'm adding some shadow on the shoulder pad. It's basically just the same method that I'm using here that I used before. So again I use the triggers for zooming out and in just to check how it looks.
so I don't know if you can see what I did there but I just made the feather a bit darker where it goes closer to the hat just to uh, make sure that it looks like it goes behind it and now I'm using a little trick to add some depth to uh, to the image I'm using uh, the same color as the background and I'm just drawing on top of what I already have in a new layer I'm later on gonna turn down the opacity on this and this will make it uh, look like there's kind of some fog or something in the picture that makes some of the stuff go more into the background and this is a really easy trick to use and it gives a lot of uh, depth depth to the <laughs> character why can't I say that word? it's fucking annoying so you can see that it looks very weird right now but it's, <laughs> it's going to be better and I'm also gonna smooth it out a bit to make sure that um, it's not a clean cut, if you could say it that way. And you can see the effect already. That it really gives a lot to uh, to the picture. So these are some of the last moment changes that you can do. And I'm trying to indicate with the gradient where the light source, light source is coming from. So I'm trying to make the head the focal point uh, in some way by adding light on top of it. Also, I think I'm going to try to add darkness behind it to make it pop out more. Now I'm going to add the light source in. I'm going to make some light beams. <laughs> and I don't want it to be too clear, so I'm just turning it down a bit. Again, I'm trying to make the fog work, the depth fog. Yeah, I think I'm uh, going to add my name. And that's basically going to be it. So, if you have any questions or problems, you can always write a comment on the site bodyface.com and you're welcome to uh, write a comment if you like it as well. I hope really to hear from you and I hope you will uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I did. I really enjoyed making this video and I'm really happy with the result. I can't wait for the next video and for uh, making it in 3D. It's going to be so Freaking awesome. I'll try not to curse, but <laughs> I really want to because it's going to be awesome. So thanks a lot for uh, watching this tutorial. And I'm really happy that we went from a concept to uh, from an idea to a final concept that we can use in the 3D uh, scene or model. So see you guys.